Um, good to see you again. So this is a lecture on voice XML. And what it is is a way to provide voice content over the telephone and to get input from users over the telephone. And you use the same HTTP server that you would use for producing web content. So it's very similar, just different um, formatting tags. So a little bit of historical background, why you care about voice XML. Um, in the 1980s, when people wrote computer programs, they had to write the application logic, as they always did. But then they had to write complicated user interface code, graphics handling code, et cetera. And generally, it took a very large team of programmers to produce anything worthwhile or used by many, many people. In the 90s, that changed when web browsers came about. You just wrote your logic and some very simple HTML, and all of a sudden, you could build useful sites that many people use in a few months with just a few people. In the 80s and 90s, to make voice applications, in the 80s, you had to um, buy fancy hardware for, doing, um, for producing speech and for recognizing user input. Um, in the 90s, you could just use your normal machine, but you had to buy expensive software to run on top of it. Nowadays, there are voice browsers, which you don't have to run yourself. And so it's very similar to creating web content. You just create the content, format it in very simple VXML, and you have your application that could be used by many people. And so I'm predicting that a lot of innovation will come from this, just like it did when the web browser came about. So voice XML overview. Just like HTML, different tags. Your application, it can speak to your user either by synthesized speech, you just tell it what to say and it tries its best to read it properly, or you can pre-record audio files, which is what most of the professionals do. And it can receive input from the user by recognizing their speech. And how do you make your content telephone accessible. This graphic worked earlier, I promise. OK, I'm going to bring it up somewhere else. There we go. All right. This, by the way, is my uh, voice XML article in the ASJ. You probably read other ASJ articles. OK, so your web app. You have your HTTP server. You format in, in HTML. And somebody can just use the, vo the um, web browser on their desktop machine to view it. Very similar for voice XML. You, for telephone applications, it's just as easy. You have your HTTP server. You output it in VXML. You go through a commercial voice XML gateway. And then people can just call it. And this takes care of all the translation of text to speech, et cetera, and speech recognition. And there are a bunch of voice XML gateways out there. And at least four of them I found are free on the web. And uh, they're called Voice Genie, Voxio, Be Vocal, and Tell Me. Tell Me is, I guess, the most popular one. Are the vocabularies restricted in those products? Or they, as far as speech recognition goes. You, you define grammars of what the user is allowed to say. And some of them have better predefined grammars than others, so you'll probably find a favorite. OK, the Hello World program. All right, so every VXM, OK, first of all, this is XML which is a little bit, uh, you have to be more careful with it than HTML. If you've done the WAP problem set, then you're already familiar with this. Every opening tag has to have a closing tag, so VXML slash VXML. If it's a tag that doesn't need a closing tag, you put a slash at the end to say this is an opening and closing tag. If you forget one, your application is not going to run at all. No second chances. So, OK. Every document starts with VXML, ends with slash VXML. The documents are divided into forms, which are just logical groups. And 
I'll show you the go to later, but um, generally you go to different parts in the form. It's very, very primitive programming. Um, you put your executables into a block. You just always clump them together like that. And in this case, all you're executing is audio. Hello world, it says. It's uh, not a pre-recorded file. It just goes and, and reads that text. You could say audio source equals some wave file, for instance. And then go to next. That can either take you to another URL, another form within the same URL, or underscore home takes you to the beginning of the application, which in the case of tell me, it just takes you back to the main tell me menu. Stop me if you have any questions, by the way. That one was pretty simple. OK, this one's a little bit fancier, but it's actually simple once you break it down. OK, so here's a, another voice XML document. And it has one form in it. And this form we've named Animal Questionnaire. And uh, in a form, you can only define one field, at least in the tell me grammar. I should, I should mention that syntax. I should mention that each of the voice XML browsers has their own slightly different syntax. So it's very hard to change once you've made up your mind. No, I shouldn't say very hard. It's a pain in the neck to change and try to debug it if you decide to use a different uh, voice XML browser. OK. So you have your form here. And there's one field in it called favorite animal. You can prompt the user for input which is just a simple audio tag. And then here's the interesting part. You define a grammar. So this is what the user is allowed to say. This ugly C data thing, it just means uh, don't interpret everything inside of this as the XML tags. And so you, uh, if the user says dogs, hounds, puppies, or hound dogs, then it's as if they had picked dogs from a drop-down list in HTML. If they say cats, kitties, or kittens, it's as if they had chosen cats. Um, all right, then to handle the input, there are three tags. Build means that it recognized the result as one of the, the, valid, um, the valid entries in the grammar. No match means they heard you say something, but they, they didn't recognize it. And no input, that's executed after a few seconds. It depends on the browser um, if they don't hear anything at all. And it can take input via the keypad or by speaking. It, with this grammar, it's just speech. So if it's filled in and they said something which translated to dogs, then go to popular dog facts. It has a, a pound sign in front of it, which means that it would go to an additional form inside the same page. Um, if they said cats, then we're going to take them to another script, and we're going to pass on um, the value of the variable favorite animal. So that, that's all that happens if it recognized the input. If it didn't, then it says it doesn't understand you, and it reprompts, which means that it just reads that prompt that we put at the top. And no input, it says it doesn't hear you, and it does the prompt again. It doesn't really get much more complicated than that. That is voice XML for you. All right, so case study one, the pie recider. So we're going to try it out here. I did it on tell me, which unfortunately means we're going to hear some ads. your actual applications will sound like when you do it. Tell me. Good morning. This is 1-800-555-TELL. Glad you called again. Learn how to get around on Tell Me faster and easier. Say Tell Me more. Main menu. Here are all the categories you can choose. Okay. Extensions. When you're done there, say Main menu. Hang on while I connect you to extension 58874. Extensions content is not produced or monitored by Tell Me Network. How 
many digits of pi would you like to hear? Please say a number from 1 through 9,999. 100. You have requested 100 digits. 3.1415926535897932384626433832. Well, I could listen to it forever, but I won't subject you to that. So let me show you what the source code is. It's very simple. So first of all, we just have a, a normal. We have a normal voice XML page. You, you should probably, yeah, you'll recognize all of these elements. We have our form. We have our field called how many digits. You prompt for the number of digits. Um, tell me provides this grammar. The reason I chose 9,999 was because they had a predefined grammar that went up that far that it recognized any number up to, up to 9,999. Um, if it understood the response, it, it goes to a script that generates the digits. If it didn't, it's the same, same thing. All right. In this next page, I wrote in AOL Server Tickle, but it's the same with any programming language. You just write a program that reads the user input, uh, figures out how many numbers of pi to generate, generates them, and reads them off to the user. And then it formats the content in VXML and returns it. So get the digits. We're going to build up our audio tag string, go through the digits of pi. Just for fun, if they happen to choose six digits, then you can uh, listen to me reciting it <laughs> with a wave file. Um, assemble the content. Very simple. Opening tag, form, your block that says you've requested this many digits, and then it goes and plays them out. And that's it. And then you, you write out the content. Um, one little tip. Let's see. Well, I chose content type star star in this example. But if you do text plain, it's very convenient for debugging. These voice browsers don't typically care. You don't have to say it's VXML. You can just output it in text plain. And then if things are uh, looking screwy, you can go to your web browser and just access the page and see what it looks like in plain text. So you know exactly what the browser is seeing. All right, that's case study one. Number two is the Ars Digita phone directory. So once I was sitting at my desk, it was a Sunday afternoon, and Tracy called me because she had just arrived in Los Angeles, and she didn't know where the Los Angeles office was. She didn't know the phone number of anybody at the office. So she called me up desperate and was lucky that I was at my desk to go to our internet, look it up, and read it to her. And uh, you, you can go to this presentation later and try it out but, um, so that we don't have to, to listen to the whole tell me uh, menu sequence. But if you just, oh, well, actually, you can't because you don't know the passcode. But it's going to ask you to enter the name of a person or office, and then it will read, read out all the information in the internet, phone number, and the address. Um, and the source code is here, which you can check later. There are a few interesting things in here. So here is a little procedure that I, I, write, I wrote and that you can just use that uh, goes and changes all of those. If it looks up something in the database and it sees one of those characters, or if it sees a less than, greater than, or ampersand, it goes and changes it to the right code for you. So that was one lesson learned. Um, another useful, if you're using Oracle, um, here's a function that translates an alphabetic string to keypad numbers. So I, I actually learned when, when doing this, um, telephone directory, you pretty much have to make people type in the last name. You can't let them spell it out or say it because it turns out that long grammars just don't work well. I thought it'd be clever and, and uh, let people spell it with their voice. So I generated a grammar that had A, B, C to Z 
A, B, <laughs> A, C, A, D, <laughs> etc., all the combinations up to a four in length, and it completely crashed the browser. Um, it turns out you can't have more than about 10,000 elements, at least for tell me, not to mention it, it really it misrecognized so many things when I just had you know 20 elements or so because I guess letters sound very much the same, T, P, hard to tell the difference. So that didn't work, so I had to make people type it in, which is not ideal, but that's how it goes. So here's a function that in PLSQL, um, you can just, any one of your columns that is, uh, any text column, it'll translate it to the numeric digits. So if somebody types in, uh, actually I will demo it because I have this cute thing. You can see that doing this and debugging it gets annoying. <laughs> All right, new center. Oops. Main menu. Main menu. Here are all the categories you... All right, extension. When you're done there, say main menu. The other problem is if the room, if the room is noisy, it recognizes the input and it Hang on, well, <laughs> thinks that you're saying something. Two seven seven three four extensions content is not produced or monitored by Tell Me Network. Welcome to the Ars Digit at Telephone Directory. Please enter the six digit passcode. You got that passcode on film. Now everybody can go and access this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I did not understand your response. Using your... I'm sorry, no matches were found. Please enter the first few letters of a last name or office using your... Okay, so this is what Tracy would have done to get the Los Angeles office. For Eric Lorenzo, press 1. For Jim Jordan, press 2. For Jen Mayer, press 3. For Suvarna Kopiker, press 4. Some of these four names. Press 5. To find... <laughs> the Los Angeles office. Telephone 626-689. Four one zero zero. Fax six two six six eight nine four one nine nine. Address sixty F Los Robles, Pasadena. Again, the contact okay. information. Here's another one. For Alex, press one to find the different person. For Alex is a very good dog, but he doesn't know how to use the telephone. Thank you for using the R's digit and telephone directory. Okay. So you can put if statements in your code, too. <laughs> so how do you actually post it to this It's really easy. You, uh, you sign up for a developer account at studio.tellme.com, and they let you point uh, an extension to any URL you want. It's free, easy, nothing to it. You just fill out a form saying, I want my extension to go here. All right, lessons learned. Told you about the HTML, encoded characters, practical limitations on grammars, funny pronunciation. These, uh, these text-to-speech converters try to be clever. So if you're trying to recite pi, and you have like 14159, it'll say 141,000, you know, whatever. Uh, so the, the trick there was to put spaces in between the each number so that it read them separately. Also, MD. So Philip's brother, he's a real doctor. Uh, 
Harry Greenspun, MD, and that's his name in the internet. And so when it read it, they, it read it as Harry Greenspun, Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> the, the coincidence is that he lives in Maryland, so I didn't bother to change that. Okay, and with Tell Me, and I, I didn't have this problem with Voice Genie, another uh, voice browser I tried, all the form variables appear in the query string. Even if you submit it via method equal post, it still appends it into the query string, which you don't want if somebody's entering a password because it's going to show up in your access log. So uh, just be careful about that and don't, don't ever do anything too sensitive, at least not with Tell Me. And that's it, actually. Do you guys have any questions? What's the overhead between using synthesizer or calling a, uh, a source file? And the I, I haven't actually noticed a big difference. I think it caches them, so it, it does a good job. In the, uh, well, in the main menu, you heard they read off the choices. It didn't take so long to, in the main tell me menu, it's all pre-recorded because they want it to sound professional. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, it doesn't take long at all. Not if it's little snippets of, of voice. Is it actually stored on their machine? No, it's stored on your machine. And at least tell me it's right on an internet backbone. They're right at Exodus. I think they're actually in the same building as our Stigitus servers. So it doesn't take long. Would it take any kind of, of sound format lab or other compressors? It, tell me once wave files. And the nice thing is that you don't have to um, buy any software to record it. You can just call up, tell me, and they'll record what you say. Yeah, and they'll email it to you. <laughs> Not very high tech, but hey, it's cool. <laughs> the cases you mentioned, it seems to me, I mean, you said it's really bad thing that people have to spell out names, and that's a natural kind of problem between mapping 26 char character out of that onto a phone thing. But mm. it seems like, in general, if you were offering select box type approaches, wouldn't it be much easier to get people to, you know, for the traditional voice menus you, you get in companies for dogs press one, for cats press two? Um, mm. You don't, you solve any problem of, of um, you know, having to run grammars because somebody might have said the wrong word or, or you know exactly what the input is. It just seems mm. as though that might be a... Yeah, there are actually okay. some some other services, non-VXML services that decompose what people say into syllables and then you can look up arbitrary things in the database and it works really, really well. It uh, makes tell me look like a piece of junk, but, um, but hey, it's free and easy to use. Well, hey, if we end early, then you have more time to do your problem set. Thank you. Thank yep. you.